and welcome back to Kidocracy at Large. I am Siddhan Chandra, here every Saturday to look at current events and collective conditions through the lens of Kidocracy. Kidocracy declares the rule of minors and minorities and seeks to integrate the 99%, that is, the minorities, enough to rule and regulate the planet's richest 1%. Minors are children who cannot vote. And minorities include not only people, as in indigenous, black, Muslim, queer, women, but also non-human entities such as the million species at risk of extinction due to the climate emergency. Kidocratic education is taught by minors and minorities through individual action as well as movements such as Black Lives Matter, Idle No More, Me Too, all to combat adult supremacy and majoritarian fascism. It is aimed particularly at the 99%, the minorities, who are divided and ruled by the 1%. How does majoritarian fascism that favors the 1% work? Recently on a TV show called Good Morning Britain, the insufferably pompous hosts express shock at students at Oxford choosing to remove a portrait of the Queen from the graduate students' common room. Professor Kihindi Andrews, a guest on the show, said he supported it 100% since, quote unquote, the Queen is the number one symbol of white supremacy. And the host said, 99.99% of people would disagree with you. There you have it. The 99.99% who are divided and ruled by the 1%. That is, the 99% is divided from itself. Isolated, it is ruled by the 1%. The most hilarious majoritarian fascist argument came from the other guest, Calvin Robinson, a young biracial royalist who said the students were virtue signaling. Open quote. They are jumping on, as students do, the latest bandwagon. It was Black Lives Matter, before that Extinction Rebellion. They want to be seen as good people, rather than actually spend time doing good work. It's much easier to, I don't know, remove the Queen's portrait from the common room. He went on to say, you can't cancel the Queen, you know. God save the Queen. Currently. 99% of the world, like this guy, Calvin Robinson, is majoritarian. If it's not the Queen, it is the Pope, or Elon Musk, or Modi, or Putin. It fears revolutionary action and believes in charity. It admires and emulates successful practices of the tech billionaires and upholds the cultural value of institutions such as the British royal family, local versions of it, as a fixer of the status quo. It identifies with the most powerful and remains silent on forest fires, status of refugees, oppression of women and children, impoverishment of formerly colonized countries. Majoritarian fascism is a form of house slavery that believes in the goodness of the masters. Blinkers to focus on work. Meanwhile, Black Lives Matter has emerged and belled 
the white supremacist cat. After just seven years of existence, it managed to force the hand of history to change leadership in US politics, stopping a descent, a leap off the cliff, both socially and environmentally, a blast of optimism that can only strengthen movements such as roads must fall, a movement to decolonize education that began in the University of Cape Town, South Africa in 2015 and spread to other universities across the world including Oxford, Harvard, and Berkeley. In a recent statement, 150 academics of Oriel College in Oxford have refused to do anything other than co-teaching to protest the non-removal of a statue of Cecil Rhodes, a 19th century imperialist from Oriel College. They said the decision over keeping the statue undermines us all. Faced with Oriel's stubborn attachment to a statue that glorifies colonialism and the wealth it produced for the college, we feel we have no choice but to withdraw all discretionary work and goodwill collaborations, such as undergraduate admissions interviewing, attending talks, seminars, and conferences. The college, despite having agreed to remove the statue earlier, backtracked and decided to keep it due to regulatory and financial challenges. Rhodes left 100,000 pounds to Oriel College in his will to promote his vision, calling for, open quote, the establishment, promotion, and development of a secret society the true aim and object whereof shall be for the extension of British rule throughout the world, the perfecting of a system of emigration from the United Kingdom and of colonization by British subjects of all lands where the means of livelihood are attainable by energy, labor and enterprise and especially the occupation by British settlers of the entire continent of Africa. The Holy Land, the Valley of the Euphrates, the islands of Cyprus and Candia, the whole of South America, the islands of the Pacific, not heretofore possessed by Great Britain, the whole of the Malay Archipelago, the seaboard of China and Japan, Decolonizing education has only begun and such movements are crucial to dismantle majoritarian fascism. Kidocratic education confronts fascism through such education about racism, colonialism, neoliberal capitalism, dictatorship, Islamophobia, feudalism, patriarchy, homophobia, climate denialism, and so much more. In a short documentary by Nasir Hashmi called Indians, we meet Roberta Hill, a Canadian residential school survivor, who shows us the school and the church where she was sexually abused by a Catholic priest. After displacing the indigenous people from their lands, the British colonial government, in cahoots with the church, separated native kids from their parents and put them through a residential school system that banned native languages and culture, forced labor on the kids, and abused them physically, emotionally, and sexually. The film also shows Ron Short, a retired RCMP officer, who 
acknowledges depression from something he had done 50 years earlier. Following orders, he had accompanied a residential school agent to pick up two indigenous kids from their parents. Since the school was run by the church, he did not question it then. But 50 years later, suffering from depression, he crossed the fence and connected with native people and came out about his part in a genocide that killed 6,000 or more native children of the 150,000 that were put through this school system. Azir Hashmi, the filmmaker, juxtaposes this retelling of the Canadian native genocide with that of the 2002 Gujarat riots that killed over 2,000 people in India with an excerpt from Rakesh Sharma's film, Final Solution, a documentary, the boy who had witnessed his family destroyed by marauding Hindu fascists states that he would like to become a soldier and burn the Hindus like they did his family. Hashmi also includes a very telling shot from the same film in which another little boy, a Hindu boy, at an anti-Muslim hate rally, listening to cries of long live Mother India, Mother India, the Queen, the Fuhrer, they're all symbols of institutions that perpetuate violence against minorities. Hashmi, who personally witnessed the horrific Gujarat riots, concludes the film with these words. The tale of what happened during those dark days in Canada, India, and so many other countries must be told again and again and again, not out of a morbid desire for gruesome tales, but out of a concern that the innocent dead should continuously sear the memories of the living. Only then can the cry never again cease to be an empty cry. Indeed, fascism is a condition that develops from a state of amnesia. To quote George Santayana, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. The title of the excerpted film, Sharma's The Final Solution, refers to the Nazi plan to exterminate all Jews during the Second World War, a well-documented Holocaust that killed six million Jews and many others. Anti-fascist education involves remembering and mourning all the holocausts of the Jewish people by the German state, of Palestinians by the Israeli state supported by the Global North, of Hiroshima and Nagasaki by the United States, of the indigenous people of the Americas by European settlers, of Muslims and Hindus during the partition of India and Pakistan brokered by the British, of the Rohingya, the Uyghurs, and so many more. And then it involves taking effective, proactive action to dismantle fascism. It involves flying from molar entities towards molecular connections, 
flying from institutions of the state, the church or mosque or temple, the school, and even the family, in order to connect with people that are completely different from oneself. It involves making an ethical choice, like the citizens of the United States did, between a white supremacist cop and his black victim. It involves crossing the fence, like Ron Short, to affirm Native history. And it involves upholding freedom of religion and social diversity. And it involves integrating the 99% that are still ruled, divided and ruled by the 1%. And yes, it involves cancelling the Queen. Till next week, bye.